and this is about like which TEFL course to take. Okay, first off, you should know in Asia, you don't usually need a TEFL course, although it can depend on the school and the country somewhat. So, um, but it's not usually needed for visa purposes. Anyways, now that you know that, you do usually need a degree and to be a native English speaker to get a visa in Asia. Usually. So, anyways, we're going to go now into the subject, which TEFL course you should take. Okay, uh, differences. You have a TEFL, TESOL, CELTA. They all generally refer to the same thing, okay? Um, you can look those phrases up if you want. CELTA is going to focus more on uh, uh, teaching adults. TEFL and TESOL doesn't directly relate to teaching adults or not, although most courses do focus more on teaching adults. So, <clears throat> now the next thing you get a uh, choice you'll have to make is whether you're going to take a course online or if you're going to take one in class. Or you could do a combination of the two if you want. Um, so, ha here's some questions to ask yourself. I'm going to read through them quickly. Okay. How long are you planning on teaching abroad for? So, if you're only planning on teaching abroad for a short period of time, then something you're going to want to consider is, you know, how much money do you want to spend on this? If you're only going to do it for a short time, uh, now I probably would, if I was going to go back, I'd probably do things differently than what I did when I took a course. I spent a thousand bucks for a course, didn't really feel like I learned anything useful in the course. I would do things differently. <clears throat> Um, and it was like a combination in class. To, um, you did like half of it in class, and then the other half was like you, do, you did on your own. So number two, the question, what's your budget? So think again. So again, so let me back up a bit. How long are you planning on teaching abroad for? So if you're only going to do it for a short term, I wouldn't think about spending, you know, much money on one. If you're in it for the long term, you really want to learn, then you might want to take a CELTA course. Okay, and if you're going to be teaching adults, same, take a CELTA course. But if you're not committed to doing it for a long term or for like a career or whatever, then you gotta think about your budget. So your budget, number two, what's your budget? So. You could get a course anywhere, an online course, like a cheapo on Groupon for like 39 bucks, okay? And uh, if you, and you could pay all the way up to like 3,000 bucks for like some Celta courses can cost almost that much that I've seen. So that's your budget, something to consider and, you know, yeah, anywhere like most online ones are going to be cheaper, a few hundred bucks, whatever. It just depends. Depends on the company. Depends on how long it is. You get different hours, of course. Um, maybe I'll go into that one later. So here's another question. What's your timeline? So if you're flexible, then um, you can maybe go to another city or whatever to find a course. I mean, if you want to take an in-class course, a classroom-based course, you're going to have to get to a place, find a place that has it in your area, or go to another country, or wherever, city nearby, wherever, so you have to look that up, find that out, you know. Uh, that's number four, other classroom courses in the area, so if, you, if you're not close to anywhere, and you don't want to uh, commit to, uh, you don't want to travel, or whatever, then maybe an online course is your best bet, right? Okay, who are you planning on teaching? This is, I think, a pretty important one, okay? So if you're gonna be teaching children, I wouldn't take a course that focuses on teaching adults. And most courses do focus on teaching adults. You're gonna, you're gonna miss something. I know from experience, the course I took, you're gonna miss something with classroom management, okay? You're not gonna learn really important stuff that you need to manage a classroom of kids if you take a regular teaching course that's focused on teaching adults, like most of them are. Uh, so consider that, you know, you want to teach adults, kids, businessmen, 
whoever, you know, get a course that focuses on teaching the people you want to, you want to teach. Okay, do you need, uh, next question, do you need personal feedback? Some online courses, they won't give you any feedback, okay? It's just all online, and, um, and then there's, like, if some online courses will give you feedback. Feedback is based on maybe lesson plans or the work you're doing, something like that, right? And then if you take a classroom-based course, a lot of them, like, say, 120-hour course or whatever are going to have, like, this is a CELTA model, like six hours of classroom training when you'll like do teaching, practice teaching, and then they're going to give you feedback on your stuff, like how you teach and stuff, and tell you what you need to change and all that stuff. So do you need that? That's a question to ask. Okay, now the next question to ask, are you a self-directed learner? Now what that means is can you do you get stuff done by yourself? Do you need someone there encouraging, pushing you? Uh, do you need to be in a classroom with other people there, that sort of support system? Or can you do it on yourself? Can you teach yourself how to do things? That's basically what it is. So if you are, then maybe an online course would be uh, best for you. So now, what are the arguments? Are against some the arguments against online courses. Some people say some employers won't accept them, but in my experience, teaching in Asia very rare. In Asia, you might see it sometimes uh, in the Middle East. I've seen jobs there advertising, or um, some places in Europe, or really high end language schools, maybe some universities, prestigious schools, but the thing is, if you don't have an experience, you're probably not going to get a job there anyways, they won't even consider you. Even if you took a CELTA course and you had no experience and you applied to that school, they're going to give the job, these really high-end schools are going to give the jobs to people who have, teachers who have experience, years of experience, and the best qualifications, which are sometimes licensed teachers or teachers with MA and TESOL or master's degrees, all kinds of stuff, we really wouldn't worry about that. Like some, there's a lot of hype out there, you know, there's, there's a lot of hype out there about TEFL courses and stuff, so just be mindful of that when you're reading along, right? Um, and then the other people who, some people may say against online courses, these are like people who are like, um, they... They're, they they took a they're, 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 that's what they did they took an in class course and they believe that's right there's some CELTA snobs out there that are like that they think it's the only way there's only one way they have a very traditional frame of mind and actually uh, slightly diverging from the topic at hand you don't you can if you're like dedicated and you're really the self directed learner type you can teach yourself how to teach okay you don't need to take a TEFL course right um, if you, it's just it's just like anything you know you look at there's been great people for of all kinds right like who am I thinking of like Steve Jobs everybody knows Steve Jobs he's another one Karis one you probably don't know about but the guy didn't even, I don't think he even has a high school diploma, but he's, um, he like lectures at all the like biggest universities around, around the states, you know, like prestigious universities. He didn't even graduate from high school, you know. So those are a few examples, and you probably know them, other people who didn't go to college and stuff that were very successful, you know. You don't have to follow the path or whatever if you really don't want to. Anyways, back to the topic on hand. Uh, how many hours? There's 20, 40, 60, 100, 120, 150, blah, 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 blah hours. Does it matter? Basically, the shorter course is going to be less extensive, less thorough. Uh, does it matter to employers? Maybe to a few. In my experience, not many. You know, it's like, um, it's like, there's a few employers out there who may really care about the TEFL course or the TEFL course you take, but I'd say the majority of them in Asia, they don't care. <laughs> They're all the same. They look at them all the same, you know? 
Um, now, if you want to teach in Korea in the EPIC program, which is popular, uh, they stated on their website that they uh, prefer teachers who have taken a TEFL course with 20 hours of classroom-based teaching. Uh, that's for the EPIC program in Korea. That's not for Korea. For Korea, you don't need a TEFL course to teach, to, to legally teach there. So, but if you want to get a TEFL course because you want to learn something about teaching or whatever, then in most other situations, an online course would be okay if you want an online course or any other. Yeah, so that was just for the EPIC program. Uh, okay, there's uh, so you still there's so many options and stuff. How can you choose? There's so many people out there that have there's so many tough courses out there, right? How can you choose? Uh, I got a list of reviews here or a list of uh, things you can consider. Let's see. Um, just look what they offer. What do they offer like for free? Do they give you any information on your site for free? blogs, newsletters, any sort of free course, or, I don't know, anything. What are, what are they doing for free, you know? Videos, stuff like that. Uh, something else, how long is access to the course for? Um, if you take a, this is the thing about, if you take an in-class course, it's like a one-time, boom, you're there, and you're done, and you don't have, uh, you might get some books from the course like I did, but never used them, just big, heavy, bulky books that I never used, um, because I would have preferred videos, that's why I started all of ESL Insider, because um, videos is the better way to learn, for me anyways, you can learn something really fast by watching a video, as opposed to reading a book or whatever, or reading through a mess of online text, so... Uh, you can ask to see what the content, the course looks, the course content looks like, the syllabus, um, the about page. Like I think that tells you quite a bit about a website about page. Like personally, I go to these. I've seen you know, some really vague uh, about pages that basically tell you nothing. It's just kind of like they're it's like someone's hiding behind the. Um, yeah, it's very anonymous. Um, a lot of about pages like that. Uh, you can look up reviews. There's some review sites out there. You got the real popular one. Um, it's an affiliate based affiliate based site. Like the guy gets paid to um, by having those reviews on his site. He gets like a commission from all that. It's not like free, you know. Uh, so you can text. Some people say accredited TEFL courses like. Um, matters now my my uh, I'll put a link down below to an article or a couple articles about accreditation and TEFL courses uh, some think it matters uh, to employers from experience doesn't matter that's just like TEFL marketing they say hey our course is accredited yours is not um, there's a lot of like how do you say there's like um, I'll put a link you see the links below about accreditation, so you can learn more about that. It's a whole other topic. Um, they don't have to be accredited. Uh, yeah, so see those articles. Um, where was one of them? Uh, there's an article um, called Why Accreditation Doesn't Work. And that was by, like, uh, some... Yeah, you see it. So I'll put a link down there for you. Anyways, uh, I think... Hopefully that helps you some, gives you some idea about uh, some help with choosing a course or something, you know. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know, okay? Mm -hmm.